This channel is made possible through the support of generous listeners just like you. If you would like to be a part of helping us bring our message of hope, peace, love, and spiritual truth to the world, please consider heading to experienceofthesoul.com slash support where you can join us as an ongoing patron or simply make a one-time gift. Blessings on the journey, dear friend. CCU Orlando, Natural Awakenings Magazine, and Unity of Nashville present The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly show featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from diverse perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, Episode 70, Spirituality is the Latest Trend. And now your host, Rev. Cynthia Alice Anderson. Hello, and welcome to The Authentic Spiritual Journey. My name is Cynthia Alice, and I'm the host, and I'm here in 818 Studios with my producer. Hello, everybody. My name is Dave Croft. Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode, episode 70. Wow, and we are so excited because we are over 38,000 downloads. Uh, We always love when... uh, we always love to know people are joining us from all around the world, that people are watching and listening. And thank you for watching us on YouTube as well. Um, I'm thrilled that those listens are going up uh, quickly every day, and that excites me to know that you are being supported, that you're being lifted by our show. And today is no exception, and we love doing shout-outs. Yeah, we're going um, to give a shout-out to our listeners in Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, where? Have we done Antigua? Antigua? <laughs> In Barbuda. It says Barbuda right there. Not Barbados. I thought it would be Barbados, but it's Antigua. Barbuda. You know what? I have to admit this. I've got to do some work. I don't know where that is. It's the uh, Caribbean, isn't it? It's got to be. It's got to be in the Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. Antigua, Bahamas. Oh, that's that's, that's the only way I know. Oh, man. (laughs) Well, I just didn't know Barbuda. I don't know Barbuda. Okay. So I'm going to look that up, and I am going to know more the next time I am on the show, so I can so I can really do a proper shout out to you. So we love you, we bless you, thank you from everywhere you're joining us, and um, we love that we're at thirty eight thousand over thirty eight thousand downloads. Probably by the time you hear this, it'll be over forty because yeah, yeah, Bar- the Bar- listens have have really increased. Yeah, Barbuda is north of Antigua and St. John's. Oh, cool. Yeah, so oh, that, gorgeous yeah. area. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. thank so you. So thank you, Barbu- Barbudan <laughs> listeners. Gosh, you guys got to educate us. Yeah. I, I'm embarrassed. I don't and, know more. And the reason I wanted to pull, the, pull them up today is just, you know, have Dorian last month. You know, No kidding. All the islands were so oh impacted. Oh, my gosh. Man. So our, our hearts and thoughts and prayers and all of that, that really goes out to you guys. And, and I hope that everyone listening uh, pulled through Dorian um, relatively unscathed. Yes. So thank you for joining us, friends. We're we're glad to have you with us. And we know that no matter where you live, where you might be from, that spirituality is the latest trend. And so today, show 70, that's exactly what we're working with. This idea, spirituality is the latest trend. And there's a lot of research about that. And I, you know, I love that that's the case because even uh, a decade ago, spirituality was not in the forefront the way it is today. And what I mean by this is that spirituality has found its way into the um, into the global market, into the um, um, I'm wanting to say perennial philosophy. What I'm meaning is the general uh, the consciousness of the general population. There used to be pockets of people, uh, you know, around the world that knew about spirituality. There'd be a small meditation group here, a small meditation group there. But now the words, the language, the images of spirituality are all around our country and around the world. And we see them, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I was speaking with someone the other day who's Buddhist, and we were laughing that um, because they've been a Buddhist their whole life, and they were laughing how now the Buddha is sold at Pier 1 at, um, <laughs> you know, all these all these world markets and things like that, and that uh, often people use these images to decorate their homes, not really knowing the the meaning. And so we love that spirituality is the latest trend, but we want it to go even deeper. So uh, spirituality right now is used, in fact, uh, um, to sell items. And so what's good about that is that the the words, the ideas are hitting the general population. The negative to that is that it seems like we're replacing some of us uh, buying an, an item um, uh, for I'll, I'll give you a for for instance, 
there's this company that sells gum and they're called Peace of Mind Gumballs. And so when I was in ministerial school, this, this is when it first came out. This is 2003 or early 2000s anyway. And I went in the mall again, I'm in the mall and, um, and I go, Oh, there's a piece of mine gumball. I said, I'm going to get a bunch of those for my whole class and let's chew it all at once and see if it works. And so of course it didn't work, but, but, (laughs) but we were all chewing and quiet at least. But, but the idea that, But the idea that if you buy this gumball, you will have peace of mind is funny. And I think it's it's that, okay, this is what we're all going for. Uh, It it was a mint. You know, we know that mint is very calming and cleansing, you know, and all of that stuff. So I think it's good that some of the ideas have made it into the general population. But what I want to encourage us to do is take those ideas deeper. Yeah, I remember at the like Lifeway bookstore, you you could find Testa mints. Oh I mean, yeah, test of mints. Right. I mean, at least, I, at least, you know, that was a little tongue in cheek kind of pun, but yeah, they were they were just like. There's also they're just mints with enlightened mints. I haven't seen those enlightened mints. Yeah, I have one today. So, um, <laughs> so, so it's cool that spirituality is finding its way into the general. I, I, I'm just going to use that term, the general population. But what I want to encourage you to do, friends, is not substitute buying an item for the actual work. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, well, I'm going to have my own products coming. I think that's really fun and awesome. Mm-hmm. But but I think it's not a substitute for the actual work of the soul. Yeah, it's it's meant to support, or even like for me, just you know, little reminders. It's mm-hmm. the, the reason you know I have my tattoo is that that's a that's a, a reminder. So if I ever lose sight of that, all I have to do is look down at my arm. So if you have, you know, a little something either on your desk or in your home or in your car or whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's to bring it back into your consciousness. Yes. And so we want to, we want to do that. And I think it's wonderful to have spiritual images around your home. And of course, one of the things I love is wearing a, a mala, prayer malas, which is, um, Many uh, religions uh, have prayer malas. Of course, uh, Buddhism has them. Uh, so does Hinduism, and of course, Catholicism as well. In um, you know, in Buddhism, it's a it's a hundred and eight on the strand, and. Um, but I love to wear those because that always reminds me to keep my spirituality at the forefront. And it often, um, in my, in my work, and I'm going to hold up a small bracelet I have now, if you're watching on YouTube, when you're using your, your beads, what you can do is, as you say, your affirmations, uh, it could be, I am one with God. I am one with God. I am one with God. So you move a bead with each affirmation. And then when you get to the larger bead or a space bead, you pause and breathe. So the intention of prayer beads is to really use them in your practice, not just as an accessory, a a fashion accessory. And um, um, I think uh, the first person I ever knew to do that was Madonna, actually. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, but she has actually a profound spiritual practice herself. So I want to encourage you to the things that have made it into your life and into our culture that might uh, be spiritual is to take them deeper. So another of the bracelets I wear, and I got it at CCU's Shifting Souls Boutique, is a bracelet with the um, the colors of the chakras. And this can be very, very helpful if I'm working a specific energy to just sit with that bracelet in my hand, hold that specific bead, and, think of, uh, uh, and, and try to bring in that consciousness into my body and into my life. So the idea, even though these are cool to wear, and I love to wear them nearly every day, um, there is something deeper to do with these items especially if you're using prayer beads, uh, uh, beaded bracelets and things like that, that uh, remember that these are not just fashion accessories. This is, uh, these are tools, sorry, these are tools for a deeper spiritual practice. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, we talked about Agents of Shields and spirituality, you know, that was like fun, the yeah. movie uh, mm-hmm. Doctor Strange, you know, oh, yes, and yes. that incorporates, you know, healing and everything through through spiritual practices. And I have actually a question, though. You know, I've seen... With the rise of like yoga studios and everything mm. becoming really popular in the U.S., yes, very. You know, I've seen an argument about cultural appropriation when it comes to like things like yoga practices. And I just, what, what are your thoughts on that? I, I we didn't talk about this for the show. Oh so no, I, no, I think. Sorry it's a, if I put you on the spot or whatever. No, well, uh, I always, I often talk about cultural misappropriation with the uh, Native American uh, community. Well, here's what I have to say. I think all yoga is good. 
I think any study of yoga is good. But I often wonder if somebody from India came here and saw what we were calling yoga, they might go, <laughs> what is this? Because we've got straps and mats and blocks. And, you know, in the traditional practice, um, it's not only physical, it's deeply, deeply spiritual. And um, the poses are only a, a, a minor part of the yogic practice. So I think, uh, I think it's wonderful. Uh, I think like any journey, wherever you start is good. And I think your soul will guide you deeper. So I think ultimately it's good because again, it's just increasing our awareness. And what's so amazing, the the poses are so old. I mean, you know, centuries and centuries old that I believe what happens is that something takes over bigger than what our mind Mm. can comprehend. And so holding a pose for a certain length of time, um, you know, I think is, uh, uh, the it's almost a magical spiritual thing that happens because the pose itself has a deep, deep spiritual uh, uh, meaning to it. Yeah, I wonder if it's I wonder if it's because like yoga studios have some have been really kind of commercialized and commoditized. Oh. Like you don't see. I've never heard somebody say, "Hey, that that Tai Chi practice is cultural appropriation," because no, I think right. when, when you when you go to when you sign up for Tai Chi or any sort of uh, you know martial art study, you know you kind of immerse yourself into the culture and you recognize that I am participating in a larger cultural thing. Whereas like yoga practices get plucked out and then they get stuck into like a gym membership. And, and so these yeah. things which were inherently spiritual get you know get subscription fees attached to them and stuff. Uh, exactly. Well, that does happen, and it actually does happen with Tai Chi also. Oh, yeah? Yes, yes, it does. Um, as a matter of fact, it's why I joined a temple for my Tai Chi, because I wanted to be immersed in the culture. I felt like what I was getting was not, um, you know... So that had been stripped out from wherever you I were studying? I felt it was, yes. I was looking for something deeper, and actually, I'm running into some issues with my practice because I was learning it in such a... a a simplistic way that I have bad habits now that I'm trying to overcome. The The other thing I saw recently was about yoga was there's a yoga where you show up and you drink there with alcohol as while you do the poses. <laughs> it's like a wine yoga or something. I was like, really? Wow. That's so that I might draw the line there. Um, uh, but again, what's so amazing is it's hard to mess it up because a, in inherent in the poses is a deep spirituality and a deep meaning. So, and they're all different types of yoga. So um, my introduction into yoga uh, in general was with the great uh, teacher Paramahansa Yogananda, who was responsible for bringing Kriya yoga to the West, like in the early 1950s. So, so anyway, there's, there's a lot of great energy out there and I think you have to pick and choose. And I think it's part of the journey, uh, as you find your way. So, you know, um, I didn't really know what I was doing Tai Chi wise. So I just went to where there was Tai Chi. I was really drawn to it and I loved it. And now I'm really getting schooled. I'm really getting schooled on, on, on proper technique. And so it's a different spiritual practice. I, I was very humbled at my last practice. It required tears for me to admit I didn't know really what I was doing and I thought I did. And, um, so, so that's wonderful. But the beginning practice was good because it was an entrance into there. And so I think anytime we're looking at our, our at our journey, it's important not to discount the earlier aspects of it because that was how, you know, it, it, it brought us in. So, but I do think in general things, um, things are over commercialized in our country in general, you know, gotcha. so, so I think, um, all of that, um, is, yeah, I didn't even know that about like Tai Chi practices. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Any, um, yes. Okay. I don't, yeah, we don't, we don't have to go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it, it is a deep practice and, and a deep understanding. And as a matter of fact, not only can you hurt yourself, you can really misunderstand, um, you know, what you're doing. So the good news is as we seek spiritual guidance, as we seek to move forward on our journey, God guides and directs us as our soul is ready. So for some of us, the practice we're in may be just right. And for others of us, we may need to grow, change, and move, you know, as spirit guides. So the cool thing is spirituality is everywhere. So now we have to use our divine wisdom to see what is ours to do. As a matter of fact, that's that's speaking of commercializing. That's that's one of the messages I wear every day. I have a bracelet that says on it wisdom. And if I ever put it on wrong and can't read it, I have to turn it around because it reminds me, okay, wise decisions today. So, 
you know, this only cost eight dollars. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the kind of commercialization I like. Uh, so, but but it's it's um, you know it's a hand, it's handmade. It helps a, a tribal uh, group that made it. So I love that. Um, but I do think uh, we've gone overboard in the commercialization of spirituality. Yeah, I wonder if that's like an extension of you know, hear me out, like. Like nerd, okay. Hear me out. That like nerd collectible culture, you know. Like even in this studio, I've got like a little Spider-Man guy, and I've got these little totems to pop culture, R two D two, or yeah. all my sports heroes and stuff. It feels like it's that same. It's on that same kind of vein. Is that is that? Am I off base there? It may be. Yeah, it may be. I don't know. I don't know. It, it may be. You know, my work is spirituality. What I know is that um, now, no matter where I am, um, I'm likely to have a spiritual conversation, and that was not the case a decade ago. So is that me that's changed? I mean, maybe, but clearly there's a shift in culture. Um, for instance, sorry, recently I was on an airplane, and uh, there's these cars I like to pull every day for a thought, and I have prosperity cards, you know, that I sell that you do the same thing. I love using cards. I'll use my prosperity cards for a while, then there's another deck, a couple other decks I use. So the deck I'm using right now, I pull a card every day. And so uh, when I was on an airplane recently, I I sat down, I was kind of getting organized, and there was a sweet couple beside me. They were probably in their late 20s, and they had a baby, and we had already talked a little bit. And so I, I just turned, I got up my cards, and I said, hey, are you guys spiritual? Because I'm always interested in how people might answer that. And and the flight going to where I was going, I was going to Phoenix. The flight going to, to Phoenix, I, I got several new listeners to my show. Um, and one who was in charge of an incredible nonprofit organization. So on the way back, I said, are you guys spiritual? And he goes, well, I'm not so much. She is. That's a classic uh, answer for a couple in their late twenties. So he's like, he like works outside as a welder. She, they've got three kids, you know, yoga, that whole thing. She's, she's in that. She goes, yeah. And I said, well, Hey, I pull a card every day. Would you guys like to pull a card? They go, yeah. You know, so here I am, two people I've never met before on an airplane. I have no idea what they believe religiously, spiritually, but they're like, sure, I'll take a positive thought for today. And they were like, cool. We got good ones. Great. You know, end of story. I never would have done that even a few years ago because it was not uh, so saturated in the culture. The the negative I see for the saturation in the culture is that there's not um, a, always a desire and a drive to go deeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's the... Um, I don't know, Achilles heel of it. I think yeah. the good thing is we all know about it. The negative is there's not a desire to go deeper. It seems like, well, if I do a practice and I, you know, uh, do a workshop once every five years somewhere that I'm on the spiritual journey. Well, I mean, you are, but there's so much more for you. I want to say, you've just barely scratched the surface. Mm. There's a lot more for you. Even just attending a spiritual community, you know, that's a step deeper to attend a spiritual community on a regular basis. But mostly now, people are in and out. If it's if it's a topic they really, really want to know about, they'll make the effort to come. But if it's not, you know, I'll stay at home and watch the game. Yeah, it feels like the spiritual equivalent of a fad diet, you know. It's, if it, you're not yeah. actually making life changes, yeah. then then you're not going to see sustain, sustainable results. Right. And and here's how you can really know if you're on the spiritual journey or not. Are you being guided? Are you being directed? And is your life changing for the better? You know, is your life changing for the better? Do you feel, you know, excited about getting up in the morning? Are you living on the edge of your seat because you're really following God's guidance? Boy, I can tell you I am right now. I'm on the edge of my seat. I've never been closer to God, but I'm listening, listening, listening. So just doing one little thing or, uh, you know, buying things with a spiritual uh, component, like uh, uh, one of my favorites is, uh, you know, um, specialty chocolates with a spiritual message. But I love chocolate, so I'm going to buy it whether there's a spiritual message or not. But <laughs> just, just, buying the, just buying the chocolate on your own is not going to do it. Um, I'm going to have chocolates on this show. I love that idea. Yeah. But, but... I'm not going to substitute that 
for real spiritual work. Yeah, that's a that's a support item. Not yeah, a... that's a support idea. And and again, friends, I want to encourage you to have things around you and around your space um, that in, uh, that encourage you, that lift you up, that support you spiritually. And I'm going to talk about some of those things when we come back after the break. And those things are going to be things that don't cost you anything that are really going to support and lift you up. Spirituality is the latest trend, and we want to see you tapping into that in a real and meaningful way. So we'll be back right after this. We'll return to the program in just a few minutes, but first, we wanted to give a special word of thanks to our podcast partner, CCU Orlando, who has helped make this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey possible. CCU Orlando is a welcoming community dedicated to transforming lives, celebrating diversity, and supporting soul growth. CCU Orlando is located at 771 Holden Avenue in Orlando, Florida, with Sunday services at 9 and 11 a.m. You can stream services live online as well as learn more at ChristChurchUnity.net. We'd also like to thank Natural Awakenings Magazine of Central Florida, Greater Orlando. Each month, Natural Awakenings Magazines across the country take a practical look at the latest natural approaches to nutrition, fitness, creative expression, personal growth, and sustainable living. Natural Awakenings Magazine is a free publication and is available in selected stores, health and education centers, healing centers, public libraries, and wherever free publications are located. You could learn more, including advertising opportunities for your business, by calling 407-628-0705. And finally, we'd like to extend our special thanks to Unity of Nashville, a sister ministry of CCU Orlando. If you're searching for a like-minded church community and a personal connection that supports your heart and mind, in the Central Tennessee area, then join Unity of Nashville at 10 a.m. every Sunday morning at 5125 Franklin Pike. For more information, head over to unityofnashville.org. And now we return you to this week's episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey with your host, Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. Welcome back to the show, friends. We're glad you're with us. Spirituality is the latest trend, and I love to be a part of that trend um, because it, it... might cause somebody to listen to my show that would never have listened just a few years ago. So we've been going over a year now. And again, we're probably now over 40,000 downloads, Mm -hmm. which is really amazing. Uh, By the time this comes out, I know we will be. And that's a number I didn't think we'd get to for years. So I'm thrilled about that. So so thank you for listening. I want to give you some some, uh, 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 grounded suggestions for how to uh, have spirituality in every aspect of your life, and it has nothing to do with anything you will buy. This is, I can't get this on Amazon? You can't get it on Amazon. You don't need to order it on my website, and uh, the advice is absolutely free. So, um, so some of the best things that ground me spiritually are, are very, very simple. Um, number one, take your shoes off and go stand in the grass, walk around, go to a park, get in your yard. Um, I had somebody say to me one time when I told him this, oh, but it's dangerous. I said, sweetheart, you need to relax. Um, Life is life. Yeah. I mean, there might be something somewhere if you're that worried, you know, go to a place that, you know, is kind of undisturbed. Um, So we don't need to be worried about standing in the grass, friends. Uh, You know, Standing in the grass is uh, connects you with Mother Earth. It uh, there are studies even that show that it changes the energy in your whole body. You know, from the the feet up. And of course, now I've discovered there are products you can buy. Uh, it's called earthing, and there are products you can actually buy to have a mat, like in bed on the floor. No, go outside. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you cannot replace anything you can buy with going outside. Unless unless you want to buy this thing, right? <laughs> yeah, unless you want to buy this thing for twelve ninety nine, right. if only. So so I want to encourage you to take your shoes off, go outside, stand in the grass, and um um you know I've noticed uh, with my son and myself sometimes before bed we'll just walk out and look at the look at the moon and and he said to me one day. I just feel so good when we do this. I just feel grounded and relaxed and ready for bed. And and it was just, we just 
knew there was a beautiful moon and we walked outside. So just taking your shoes off. If you can't connect, um, if you're in a place where you can't get outside, take your shoes off and imagine connecting with the grass. Because uh, uh, studies have been done about this. If you visualize something, your mind, your body doesn't know any different. It, it, it is like it is happening. So there's no excuse. Go if you cannot go outside, visualize going outside and stepping in the grass. It's free and it will definitely reconnect you with Mother Earth, which of course is spirituality itself. The very thing that gives us life and nurtures us. And especially if you do some um, spiritual work as you're there. And what I mean by this is, uh, imagine as you're standing there, imagine the earth just uh, infusing you with energy. And as that happens, um, you could also you can also imagine just releasing into the earth, and then after you release, then imagine the infusion of energy coming in and through. Um, I had a a, um, a native teacher years ago who told me to sit at the base of a tree. You couldn't get any better energy than that because of the great um, energy that trees have, and and the um, uh, the clearing energy that comes from a tree itself. And what I want you to know is, I've I've studied I did quite a bit of research over the years when I was first learning about it. And, and I've since learned that trees actually even breathe. It's very, very slow. But uh, if you look this up, there's a lot of research that the trees actually breathe. And so literally, as you sit at the base of the tree, you're breathing with nature and nature is breathing you. And it's a wonderful, wonderful reconnect with your true spiritual nature. So um, if we can, we might put a link to that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to search. I'm going to search to see if yeah, I can't dig yeah, something Yeah, for up. you. But get in nature, get in the grass, uh, you know, for sure reconnect with your spirituality. The other thing I'm going to really encourage you to do is to pick up a, a small stone and and have that as a touchstone, whether you have it in your pocket, whether you have it by your bed. It's going to really remind you of, um, of, of groundedness. And so over the years, I've, I've worked with people 30 years or more in educational and spiritual settings. And excuse me, what I've learned more often than not when people have anxiety it can be very helpful to hold a real grounding stone. Um, also uh, realize that stones have very specific um, energetic qualities. You know, some crystals are very high energy. Some some stones are very grounded. So you want to just work with what it is uh, you might need. But uh, I, I can I can almost guarantee you if you're out and about somewhere, there's going to be. Um, what do you call it when there's like not mulch, but where there's just pebbles around as like landscaping, like gravel, or? yeah, just like gravel or a river stone. Like right. there's just just sometimes just a a, saw, a small river stone to put in your pocket can be very very grounding. So I want to encourage you to to think about that. Yes, you can get crystals and other things with very specific qualities. Crystals, though, do cost, but some of them are not very expensive and can be very, very helpful energetically. But I'm talking about things you can do for free. Yeah, going out on a walk and just mm-hmm. just kind of keeping an eye out. And mm-hmm. if you find a stone that yeah. is resonating with you, yeah. for whatever reason, it might be it's pretty or I like the shape or it's smooth or maybe it's rough. I think the idea is that, is that you're allowing that thing to, uh, to become... Um, a focal point. Yes, exactly. And 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 one of the great things I uh, have learned to do over the years is do what I call an angel walk. An angel walk is where you go outside, and it needs to be a place, not really. Um, uh, it, the more secluded, the better for an angel walk. You can do it in the city. Uh, at our CCU campus, you can do it because there's some areas that are really treed, and you can go around the edge of the property. But an angel walk is where you... Um, you turn everything off, no cell phones. Uh, uh, if you're with a friend, you walk in silence. And during that walk in silence, you will um, you will notice things you've never noticed. You will hear things you've never heard. You will even see trees that it feels like they almost come to life because you're seeing images in the trees you've never seen before. And trees are very alive, very active in our process, just like the birds and the wind and the sun is. So spirituality, remember, is not something you can buy. Spirituality is a state of being and it is who you are. So as you get out in some of these places, um, I want to really encourage you to tap into that. 
Um, we've talked in past show how a certain bird coming across your path uh, can have an impact. So if you're plugged in, if you're if you're uh, if you have headphones in all the time, you're completely missing it. I have people tell me all the time, well, I do my meditation as I'm walking in nature with my headphones on. Put down the phone and, <laughs> and, and listen to nature because nature itself has a message that you are probably missing. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing meditations. I love them. As a matter of fact, I have them. And we put meditations out every week. <laughs> Great. You can do that. Fine. But, but you do need to get out and unplug and have your own spiritual experience that's just you and God. Um, so I really, really encourage you to do that. So either a um, an angel walk, picking up a stone, or being barefoot in the grass are all ways to reconnect with your spirituality. And uh, uh, finally, I want to talk a little bit about being a part of a spiritual community. So <clears throat> I believe that there's a real power in spiritual community. Uh, I've seen people um, come to church who um, ha have felt uh, very broken, who have felt like they didn't know how to face tomorrow, and six months later are completely different people because they've had love, they've had support, they've had an uplifting spiritual message. So I think I want you to choose your community well, and there are a lot of wonderful, wonderful communities uh, all around the country and around the world. Here in Orlando, there are many spiritual communities I would recommend. Yeah, this isn't an ad for CCU Orlando. No, right? no. But but I, I think that um, CCU is a beautiful community mm -hmm. and certainly one of the many um, that I would recommend here in Orlando. So um, Yeah, it's just like whenever you talk about tithing, you're not saying, give us money. We're like, this is a principle that works. Yeah. Apply it wherever your soul is led. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, and then... Um, as you are in spiritual community, then engaging with that spiritual community. So um, there are different times on our journey, and and this is what I mean by being engaged in your sp spirituality. It's important to know what you need when, and if you're in a tough place, get yourself to church somehow, somewhere, and see if it if that place is a fit for you. As you're there in the beginning, you may be in a strong place of receiving. That's good to know. And it's important to do. But at some point, when you've gotten what you need, it's important to then give back to that community so that you can give to someone else. And uh, oftentimes what I see happen in our, in our culture is that we're such a... Um, um, uh, like audience culture, what we do is we go, we get what we need, and then we leave and jump to the next thing and not forgetting that somebody was there for us at some point, That's right. you know? And so uh, now 12-step programs do this really well. We say we're supposed to share the experience, strength, and hope of our journey, you know, with another. And so even if you're feeling good and you're working your program, you still come to meetings so you can support someone else. Or let's let's say you, you go to a church and they have, you know, like a little cafe or something, mm -hmm. and uh, you were really blessed by the fruit that they that they had put out you know that oh, wow that really touched me well you can then mm -hmm. later you know after you're feeling you know on your feet and everything give into that and maybe maybe spend a morning dicing cantaloupe or 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 you know or or chopping cucumbers or something right well, sorry, go, sorry no go i was just going to say that's not that is you giving out so so that you see somebody coming through the line and you're like, wow, they, they look like they could they could use some fruit and and it's their first time here and now you have become the the support that you needed when you first came. Does that yeah. make, that oh makes sense? yeah. No, it really does. It really does. And what's so amazing, this is the other thing I've noticed over the years. And and it's if you would have told me this, I'm not sure I would have believed it. But the people that get the most out of their spiritual communities are the ones that give the most. <laughs> they they give of themselves, of their time. And so as you were talking about the um, you know, the chopping up of things, we have a wonderful team that serves and it's like three people, right? And and one leader of uh, of our uh, hospitality area at our church. And they are so connected to one another. They know what's going on in each other's lives. They support one another. And they're different ages, different race. It doesn't matter, but we're all in this together. And so they know when they show up on a Sunday that those other people are going to hug them. They're going to support them. And what they thought was them helping the church, they got right. much more blessing than they you know, were giving in terms of showing up and chopping up vegetables. So now there's a whole spiritual community back there. And that's 
even felt as we come in and eat food, and it's actually healthy food. We're one of the few churches I know that offers healthy food uh, for our time of hospitality. So, so yeah, you're right, Dave. It can be any small way. It can also be the person standing at the door greeting being the smile, being the hug, opening the door for somebody you see coming in. Um, I really want to encourage you to do that um, because it is going to help and then even um, solidify your connection to your spiritual work because you're surrounding yourself with like-minded people. So uh, your spiritual community might be a yoga studio. Your spiritual community might be a Tai Chi class. It might be a church or it might be a combination of all three. Um, I know for me, as a minister, it's wonderful for me to be in a community that I'm not in charge, that I'm not the leader, and because I am really getting to receive. So when I go to Tai Chi, um, I love that someone is helping me. I love that I get supported and lifted up there. I love that there's a whole new community of people, men, women, young, old, all races are there doing this practice together, and I get to receive. So I I really encourage you to 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 work with this idea to commit somehow to really um, attending a spiritual community of some kind on a regular basis and see if that doesn't support your journey even more. Yeah, yeah. Coming coming to CCU was huge for us, and uh, I know I shared this recently in one of the staff meetings, but. You know, we got we got kind of fried out of Memphis, coming out of Memphis, some churches and and some church ick. You know how that goes. And yes. so we never thought we would uh, really be part of a church community again, and we were prepared to be okay with that. But then I started playing drums at CCU, and immediately I noticed that there was something different. I'm like, wow, these people love each other, and they love me, and I've never shaken so many hands for as a first timer, and it's it was <laughs> yeah. super genuine and authentic, and yeah. And uh, then, you know, it's like, hey, they need a music director. And Shannon, is that something that you think you would ever want to do again? And and now we're here and I'm recording your podcast and she's downstairs, <laughs> exactly. you know, doing design and music directing. And, and so it's been huge for us yeah. because because we finding the right community that resonated, yeah. that uh, did more than just want me to volunteer. Like I, I've... I've been to some churches where you show up and you're you're a first timer, and the very first day they're like, "Hey, are we, do you want to be an usher? Do you want to help?" And I'm like, oh, "Man, I, I I just got here." Or or for me, it's like, "Hey, you play drums. Why don't you come be on the music team?" Yeah, right, right. And I'm right. like, "Whoa, I I just got here. It's my first day." Yeah. Let me just receive for a while. And yeah. So uh, yeah, CCU is is one of the few I've ever known that, that have really openly embraced. Without like without condition, Ex uh, yes. Uh, CCU is very very special, and I think uh, in the journey, people do. Uh, you will find you need certain things on your journey, and that may shift and change. We've had many people come to CCU. We've had people leave, and boy, I just honor that. And, and as a matter of fact, I had somebody come to me one time who um, had really gone deep into meditation. It's something I talk about often, and it's something I do in my practice. And our services are very high energy, and so. I asked him one day, I said, are you okay? And he said, no. I said, okay, let's talk about that. What's going on? I'm here to support you. Tell me what's up. He said, these services are too busy. And I said, I said, they are busy. I get that. And he said, and I need something more meditative. I said, I hear that. I said, in general, this is going to be the way our services are. Um, you know, we do have meditation on Wednesday night and classes that are more deep energy, but our Sundays are celebrations of the work we've done the other six days of the week. And even though there are moments of meditation, we're never going to be a church where you meditate for 30 minutes. Um, and I said, but if that's something you're needing, I support that. And, and he said, well, I am going to start attending, you know, this other thing. He said, but I know you bless that. I said, 100%. I would not want you here if you don't want to be here. And, and I hope... I, I, I'm still a friend on your list because I love you and I support you totally. And, and we just had this big hug and he said, thank you so much. I'm so glad I came to you. And I said, me too, because I want you to get what you need on the journey. So friends, hear that. What you need today might be different than you need in six months or a year, and we honor that, and I want you to honor that in your spiritual journey. I also want to encourage you not to just jump around. If somebody says something you don't like, they might be saying something you need to hear. Mm -hmm. So that's where, again, 
the deeper spiritual practice comes in. Um, um, the last thing I want to mention that's really, really important. I think I said church was lastly, but never mind. This, the, this, I really want to mention this as an important aspect of your spirituality is to begin to get quiet and listen to your own soul. Now, all these things I've talked about, it's inherent in what I've said. Being barefoot, you know, getting in touch with Mother Earth, getting a stone, if, if you know, you need the, all the other things I've mentioned. But um, really getting quiet and listening to your own soul is uh, really an advanced spiritual practice. And in many churches, they say you have to go through the priest. No, no. And, you know, even in Jesus' time, he was blowing that uh, dynamic away. This is why he called God Abba, which means daddy, right? So you didn't have to go into the temple for a conversation. No, Jesus said daddy. That has become in Christianity now that we think God is only father. But what, how, why it was important at the time is because Jesus was blowing apart this idea that God was some far off thing that you had to have someone else connect for you. Um, so I want to encourage you to follow this example that Jesus the Christ himself followed, which is to have an intimate connection with God that is yours and yours alone, that you listen, that you receive guidance, and that you know what's yours to do, when and how to do it. This is truly being on the spiritual journey. When you are, uh, you have a, I said this at the beginning, when you have a, um, a feeling of excitement, you're living on the edge of your seat because you and God are one. You and God are talking. You and God are in a communion together on a daily basis so that you know what's yours to do, when and how to do it. And yes, we encourage you to have spiritual things in your home to encourage that, but don't let those things replace the true spirituality of your soul. So we thank you for joining us uh, on the show today. Spirituality is the latest trend. We're thrilled that you're a part of it, and we're thrilled that you listen to our show. Thank you for being one of those people that shares, that that is lifted up by this. And again, if there are shows or topics that you really want to hear, please send them to us, and we will, um, we will certainly consider those as we move forward. We want to be supporting you in consciousness, and we are so grateful you join us every week. So thank you for joining us today, dear friends blessings on the journey yeah and if you have any show ideas or questions for us you can hit us up at experienceofthesoul.com slash contact we hope you've enjoyed this episode of the authentic spiritual journey presented by ccu orlando natural awakenings magazine and unity of nashville the experience of the soul podcast channel is also made possible through the continued support of our angel patrons dove borland peter gibson paul caswell jj hamilton Arlene Meyer, Kathy and Terry, Marsha Mott, Nora Miles, Diana Cox, Leslie Williams, Susanna Garcia, and Shayla Mount. The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2019, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Dave Croft and used with permission from RR Hot Publishing. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios.